That's how it starts. The fever. The rage. The feeling of disappointment that turns good nerds. Cruel. Hi guys, it's Sean here, and today I'm going to be doing a spoiler review for Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. So if you haven't seen the movie, go away and watch it and then come back because I won't want to spoil it and ruin it for you. So, spoilers, 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 you've been warned. Now, the general consensus around this movie at the minute is you either hate it or you love it. Now, personally, myself, I came out of the cinema yesterday, I was really like depressed and upset and let down by it, but I've been thinking about it more in my head and breaking it down, and I find myself more in the middle ground at the minute. There's some really bad points about this movie, but there are some positives that I took away from it and I'd like to see where they take it in the future. So, let's talk about these positives first. Ben Affleck as Batman, I thought he was amazing. He was good as Bruce Wayne playing the playboy, like mingling in at parties. That was cool. But when he was Batman, he was kicking ass. The Batwing was awesome. The Batmobile was really cool. And a lot of people are complaining like, Oh, Batman shoots people. Batman kills people. That's not Batman. I know Batman doesn't kill people, but what I got from this incarnation of Batman was... He's the veteran. He's been trying to save Gotham for a long time now. And what's he got to show for it? He's got a dead Robin. Wayne Man has been burnt down and wrecked. There's not much left of that. So, what I think about this is, he's seen like in the past things like the Joker. He lets the Joker live God knows how many times. He keeps putting him in prison. He breaks out and now he's got a dead Robin. Wayne Man has been burnt down. I'm assuming the Joker's done that. And that's been the breaking point for him where he's thought, you know what? I'm not going to just arrest these people anymore and put them away because they just get back out and they hurt people. I'm going to cut the head off the snake and that's why he wants to kill Superman. He's already destroyed half a city. What's stopping him from destroying the world? He needs to be taken out. He's a major threat. So I thought Batman was great in this movie. I bought all his motivations. I hope to see more from his character in the future, like the backstory with Robin and stuff like that. So it seems like that's what they did with Man of Steel. They made the mistakes in this one and then they explained them in the future one. So I think that's what they're going to do with Batman's character. Speaking of Superman, I liked him a bit more in this movie than Man of Steel. He's still just Superman for me. He's alright. I, I don't really care about the character of Superman that much because I never feel like there's any stakes there for him because he's so superpowered. So Superman, he was fine in this movie. I had no problems with him. Jeremy Irons as Alfred, I thought he was incredible. I like how he wasn't like the dawdling... Like, would you like some dinner, Mr. Wayne? Oh, I'll just feed it to the dogs then. Or it wasn't like the Michael Caine, like, oh, perhaps you'd like to go and drive in the Lamborghini then, or something like that. That was a terrible Michael Caine impression, but you know what I mean? He was the practical Alfred. He was making the suits of armour. He was piloting the Batwing. He was the moral... Moral? It was the moral compass for Batman, because, as I spoke about, just he doesn't have any morals, it seems. So it was really good. It was a nice incarnation of Alfred. Let's talk about Wonder Woman. At first I thought Wonder Woman was going to be really bad in this movie, it was just Batman vs Superman, including Wonder Woman because we need Justice League members. But she was just sprinkled throughout this movie in bits and I thought the scenes that she was in, she was really effective, especially at that Doomsday fight at the end, she was really cool. Now let's talk about that Doomsday fight. I thought I was going to hate it because it was so CG heavy but I was thinking about it as like it's a Zack Snyder movie, I've already been hurt by everything before this, I've seen quite a bit of it in the trailer so... Let's just roll with it. I really enjoyed it for what it was. It was a lot of action, a lot of flashing fireworks and stuff going on. It was, it was cool though. It looked really nice. I, I liked how each member had their own part to play in this fight. Like Wonder Woman was in there like beating the crap out of Doomsday. Batman was flying off to get the spear. and I thought it was hilarious how Batman was just trying to be like distracting because he's like, I can't take a fucking laser blaster or a puncher on this guy. And he was like, just <laughs> like zipping away in his little grappling hook and stuff. That was really cool. I liked how Superman died. I thought that was really ballsy for him to do. Like They were like, right, this will shock him. Let's kill Superman. Because Marvel's never done anything like that. We thought, let's kill the superhero. Let's kill one of the main characters. So I thought they capitalised on that. I just thought it was a bit of a cop-out at the end. How they went, ooh, with all the dirt. Because we knew Superman was going to come back alive. So why bother doing that? But anyway, moving on from that. Let's talk about the actual Batman versus Superman fight. What we were all there for. I thought it was great. I liked how it wasn't so one-sided. Batman got some really good digs in there. Superman got some really good points in. I like it at the start where he set all the little traps up for him and Superman's like, nah, zzz, zzz, nah, we're not doing this. If I wanted to kill you, we'd do it already. And then Batman was like, well, fuck. He gets the kryptonite grenade, gasses him, and he's like, ooh, ooh, like that. And Batman's laying the smack down. The best scene in the fight for me is where Batman's pounding Superman in the face. He's like, uh, uh, and then Batman, and then Superman's just like, Nah, bruh. Nah. And he fucking levels him through the floor. I thought, yes. 
And if I'm being honest, I think if Superman didn't start going, Martha, Martha, like that, Batman would have killed Superman. I think Batman would have taken it. If he wouldn't have started blabbing on about his mummy, or like, that could have gone really wrong. Imagine if he was like, Martha, he's like, you talking about my mama? You talking about my mama? Ugh! I just, that that would have been quite funny to see in the outtakes if they had a deleted scene of that, of Batman just fucking skewering Superman. But yeah, that's as far, the, another thing that I really like. The, um, the first Flash cameo, we'll talk about the other ones in a second, but that Flash cameo where Batman's having that, well, nightmare, the future where Superman's lasering people in half, he's got his own personal army, he's got the uh, dark side things flying around. That was really cool because it's setting up a nice thing for the future, something to look forward to. But I like the Flash cameo most because it was just so like, boom, like out there, like he's dreaming and then it's like, you were right all along, Lois Lane's the key. Like that I was like, whoa. I, I didn't realise it was the Flash at first because he has all the armour on and stuff like that. But I think in the future, Flash does have that armour. From what I've seen in the comics and stuff, he is quite more armoured in the future. So I can't wait to see more from that. Now... Let's talk about the actual other cameos in this movie now. It just felt so lazy and sloppy at the end. Like Wonder Woman, she sat there watching some Netflix and then, ding, Bruce Wayne sent you an email. Clicks on it, you've got all the icons there, Cyborg, Wonder Woman, Aquaman. What else have you got in there? The Flash, and she was just clicking away through them. The Flash is saving the guy in the uh, little convenience store. Cyborg's hooked up like, uh, my friend said, like Robocop. And there's that Cuba Transformer shit that sticks to him. And the only one that... They were all bad how they terribly shoehorned them in, but the other one that I didn't mind was the Jason Momoa Aquaman one, where he was like, mm, like that. I thought, he's a, he's a lot like a shark or something like that. And he went, boom, skewered that little submarine and then swam off thought. Out of all of them, that was the best one. It was silly to put it in at all, but that was the best one in there. So, for the cameo scenes, it felt really sloppy. We knew we were going to get these like individual origin stories anyway, so why throw them all in here? I don't know. Because we'd go and see them anyway. It's not like they were like, Oh no, we need to we need to give them a test of these characters so they come back and see the solo movies. It, it wasn't necessary, so I think they dropped the ball on there. If they were going to do it, I wish they would have just done it in like a post credit scene, Marvel style. But like, God, everyone was sat in the cinemas. All the lights were still dark. We were like, we're going to get a little, uh, we're going to get a little post credit scene here. And the projectionist, he must have been like, got them again because we all sat there right to the end of the credits, and then it just came up Warner Brothers, and there was no credit scenes. I was like. Tss. Everyone was really mad and sighing and stuff, but what else didn't we like? Right, let's talk about the thing I hated about most in this movie. Jesse Eisenberg. I did a video talking about... It's got really dark in it. I did a video talking about this before. Jesse Eisenberg. I hated him when he was cast as Lex Luthor. He did exactly what I thought he was going to do. He was going to be Jesse Eisenberg. And it was like he had like electrodes on his nipples. He was like, woo, woo, woo. He had this nervous twitch and he was feeding people sweets and stuff. And... Anytime he was trying to be menacing and stuff like that, I just saw him as Jesse Eisenberg. Everyone's like, oh, well, it was Lex Luthor Jr. And it's like, why would you choose to have the diet version of a criminal? It's like having the Joker's son or something like that. It's, I don't see why they didn't have just have Lex Luthor in this movie. But it's hinted that Lex Luthor's dead, but I've not seen a grave, so I'm going to assume that Lex Luthor's just gone away for a long time. I'm hoping he's going to come back. I don't know, maybe up a fucking... Backhand Jesse Eisenberg and say, fuck off, I don't want to see you in these films any like ever again. And we get like Brian, I know he's the obvious choice, but like Brian Cranston as Lex Luthor. Let's just go with that. So Lex Luthor, it wasn't confirmed that he's dead, so he could be in one of the later movies. We'll have to see. The Doomsday creation as well, that's another thing with a big problem with. It just felt so sloppy how they were like, right, we need someone for him to fight. We can't have him fighting all the way through this film. We need someone for him to fight at the end. Now there was a toy of Jesse Eisenberg in his Lex Luthor suit, his armor suit, and I thought that would have been so much better if we would have had Lex Luthor at the end, and maybe a secondary villain from like the Batman's rogue gallery, like, I don't know, Mr. Freeze or Deathstroke or something like that, just for Batman to fight and Superman to fight, we didn't even need Wonder Woman fighting in this movie as far as I'm concerned, it would have just been nice to see her in there, but just the Doomsday creation, I love Doomsday in the comics, it just seemed like such a waste to have this like, troll looking thing like like slapping batman and superman around it it was just all those things like scenes where lois lane's like that was drawn out she's like i'm gonna find this bullet we didn't need any of that we didn't need the doomsday in those it seems like they tried to fit so many things in but then when it got down to the nitty gritty and they were like oh fuck we forgot we need to get these cameos in there and then they just threw them all in so i don't know if it's bad filmmaking from Zack snyder i know 
He's not got a brilliant track record, but he has made some alright films. Watchmen, Dawn of the Dead, they were really good. 300's really good. It, I don't know how much studio involvement was in there. Like, you need to get these cameos in there, I don't care. What you have to cut out, you have to get those cameos in there. And apparently there's going to be like half an hour on the Blu-ray, so... Let's see what's, uh, what extra's in there. Is there anything else I want to talk about? The character of Lois Lane, I thought she was... She was just a plot point in this movie, really. She's either the damsel in distress or she's trying to get to the point that Lex Luthor's a bad guy, which everyone who's watching the film knows anyway. She's got a... I thought it was ridiculous how she had the spear, the kryptonite spear. She threw it away and then she was like, oh, uh, oh fuck, I need that spear now. Let's go and swim it. And then she's the damsel in distress again. And Not to mention this. Bat, Superman, sorry. Superman can sense Lois Lane in the desert God knows how many hundreds of miles away. He can't even find his own mum in the desert. I mean, what's going on? I know Batman was like, go and save your mum and stuff like that. Go and save, like, go and see what's going on at the ship. Sorry, I'll go and save your mum. But I don't know. It was like, maybe Superman could have just gone, boop, boop, done both. You know, he's Superman. <laughs> but right, anyway, I'm rambling on, guys. So overall in this movie, I was disappointed from it. But I could, it's such a monumental task because the Marvel movies are at such a standard now where... Uh, we knew that they were going to try and match up to it, and Zack Snyder doing this, just trying to play a catch-up. I didn't think they were going to achieve it. I think they did the best that they could with what they had. It was it was messy, but it was sufficient. I'm hoping that they're going to fix what they did in this movie in the later solo movies. So, yesterday I would have given this movie a 5 out of 10, because I was just like, oh, there's some cool action scenes in there. Batman was good. But thinking about it more today, I've slept on it, I've thought about it. I give, it's not much better, but I give it a 6 out of 10. I think Rotten Tomatoes giving this like a 31 or 35, whatever they give it. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's not that bad. Sure, it's not brilliant, but it doesn't deserve that sort of a, that sort of representation. So, if you've seen the movie, guys, comment below. Let me know what you thought about it. Anything that you picked up on that I, I didn't mention. Like this video if you did enjoy it. And if you want to keep up to date with my videos or if you want to check out any of my old ones, I really appreciate that. Subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.